Hello and welcome back to Jurassic World Evolution 2, where today we're taking a bit of a break from the usual speed build series that I've been doing lately, and we're going to go over another tips and tricks video for challenge mode Jurassic difficulty, whatever you want to call it, and for this one I'm doing it for Northwest USA, but first I want to say my microphone stand still buggered. Um, so I'm holding my microphone, so if you hear anything like the cord moving or my hand moving or just any weird noises, it's, yeah, I apologize, but nothing I can really do at this point in time. But without further ado, let's get into it. So, as you can see, I have finished it on Jurassic Difficulty. I uh, just wanted to show you that as proof. But if we go into uh, the thing and then we go to the, you know, Jurassic Difficulty level... Um, you'll first notice that I did not make part-time, and I want you to know that that is okay. As you saw on the previous screen, I still unlocked my rewards. The part-time does not matter. Ignore it. You'll be okay. I've said that in every one of my tips and tricks videos. It's fine. It's okay. Ignore it. Okay? We got that? So, starting cash is 4.5 million, which I believe is the highest of any map, so that's pretty good. Uh, general and adventure guests only. Not too bad. Adventure guests are probably the hardest to bring in your park. Not really though. They're all, all guest types quite easy. Uh, but they rely on tours and lagoons and uh, infamy and stuff. Infamy is kind of annoying to get. But um, tours and that, that's fine. Um, so that, you know, that's not too much of a problem. Limited herbivores, so the only herbivores you have are Struthiomimus, Draco Rex, and Homolocephaly. Um, it gets to a point when you're not even using those guys. Uh, feeders are unlocked at 2.5 stars, which is a doozy. That's probably one of the hardest things about this. And then max emergency, sh max of five emergency shelters, which again is, is not that bad. Um, I'm going to go in-game though, just to show you how my park looked. And uh, what am I doing? So I want to go back. But also, um, while we wait for this to load, I'm going to say that this was, in my opinion, so far out of the four that I have done, this has been the hardest challenge mode map yet because A, of that 2.5 star feeder unlock thing makes it really frustrating. Um, but also... Because it's carnivores only, and yes, you can still use lagoons and aviaries, it's pretty much carnivores only. Like I said, I'm pretty sure I used Draco Rex, but I never used Struthia Mimus after 2.5 stars. And um, I want to say, please do not copy what I've done with my park here, because I had to redesign it, because the way I'd laid it out was uh, really stupid and didn't really allow for good expansion. Even now, the way I've laid it out is not all that great. But um, as you can see, I cash was not a problem. $80 million. Cash is not a problem. But to get to five stars, I believe the target income, it's not profit, the target income was $2.25 million, which is a lot. That is a lot. I used every square inch of space that I could in this park. Um and I just squeezed it in, so I'm really happy about that. I mean, if need be, I would have probably started throwing in some more Tylosaurs. I'm going on pause because disaster could strike at any moment. But, um, yeah, so that's what makes it really hard is because you've got to... Ch There's not a lot of space on this map. It's only classed as medium, but it's really not all that big. Um... So it was really hard to cram in a lot of big ticket dinosaurs, as Cabot would say, um, into a really small area. So as you can see, this is the entrance to my park, and you come out to these having all making a negative profit for some reason, but that doesn't matter. I've reached five stars, so I don't care. You come out to a lagoon that has Tylosaurus and a couple Plesiosaurs in there. If the Tylosaurus eats the Plesiosaurs, whatever... But then I've got a tour going around here with a... It's over here, actually. But it's got T-Rex over here, um, Chiangosaurus here, and Megal... No, not Megalosaurus. Um, Metriacanthosaurus here. Metriacanthosaurus is actually excellent. Absolutely excellent for 
um, challenge mode, I find, because they have a very high rating for a medium carnivore, and they're not fussy at all. They, you know, you can have quite a few of them in one enclosure, and they're happy. Um, here we have some Monolophosaurus. Here I have some Giganotosaurus. We come up to this bit. I've got some more restaurants by this. I don't know why everything's not making a profit, but again, I don't care. Maybe it's because I've just loaded back in. But coming up here, we have another tour area where we have T-Rex here. We have uh, Ceratosaurus here, uh, Allosaurus here, and then I believe Baryonyx over here. When we come over this way, we've got another lagoon, with the, which is the same as the last one. And then we've got Carnotaurus over here. Coming up here is the facilities section as well as a um, Cryolophosaurus enclosure here and some Draco Rexes here. So I did use herbivores in the end, but um, a lot of this is going to come down to micromanaging your um, facilities here just to make sure that they are the absolute best that they can be because, you know, you've got to, you're going to have to learn to, not learn, but place the appropriate amenities so if you need um purely medium amenities because large that's what's making you the most profit then you're going to do that and then go through on every configuration to see what's going to generate you the most profit and then all the modules go over each of those to see what's going to make you the most profit it's time consuming and it's not the most fun thing but it you know you want to like I said, you want to make as much profit as you can. Now, um, how do you get to 2.5 stars without feeders, you may wonder? Well, you're not going to, you know, you don't unlock Draco Rex, which is a pretty decent herbivore, if I do say, herbivore, if I do say so myself. You're not going to unlock that to one and a half stars, I believe. And it's going to be hard to get to one and a half stars purely off of Struthiomimus, especially at the beginning when you don't have a lot of cash. You're not making a lot of cash. But attractions are going to be your godsend. They're going to be your absolute best friend. Research as much as you can on attractions just to get as many different ones that you can you can that appeal to uh, general and adventure guests. Do that. that. That's what helped me a lot. Once you get to Draco Rex, start releasing some of them and build up. If it's taking too long, what you can do, and this is what I did, Make some, say, medium carnivores or, you know, make any sort of carnivore. You're probably only going to have small and mediums at this point. But I'd go with mediums because small generally prefer meat. And uh, the large, you know, medium and large prefer prey. And what you can use in place of prey is other dinosaurs like Struthiomimus. I think by the time I'd got to 2.5 stars, I had released over 120 Struthiomimus trying to feed some Changesaurus, some Carnotaurus, and some Ceratosaurus. Um, so, really, you're going to be releasing and using a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of Struthiomimus. Um, but, you know, you get there eventually. Once you get there, it's like a whole weight off your shoulders. Finally, you don't have to do any of that. Um, annoying thing, they've now got chronic stress for lagoon animals, so uh, no more can you pack three... Tylosaurus into a small uh, lagoon like this, which is a bit of a shame, but oh well. They did make some other quality of life improvements with the uh, paleo medical facility, you know, and medicating the dinosaurs themselves or being all autonomous unless there's a major injury. The goddamn T Rexes, though, were so annoying. They were always fighting. I had no, no problems with any other dinosaur except the T Rexes. It was only the T Rexes. So, uh, just make sure there's um, one's got a higher dominance than the other or, you know, there's one creature in every enclosure that's got a higher dominance than the others, so they're just not going to be fighting. But, um, so yeah, I've explained how the 2.5 uh, star feeder thing. Um, I wouldn't go for lagoons until you have feeders, even though you unlock them at two stars, I believe. I'd say maybe research them, have them researched, have the creatures ready to go. Um, but wait until you're actually at 2.5 stars so you don't get that chronic stress disease and, you know. The good thing about uh, the adventure and uh, general guests is they, they don't care too much about dinosaur comfort, whereas with nature guests, the higher the comfort of the dinosaurs is, the more nature guests you're going to get. 
Um, so that's not too much of a problem if they're say at like 80% or something, whereas uh, it may be a bit more of a pro problem when you've only got nature guess. Um, what else? The five shelter thing. I mean, you've just got to be smart with how you lay out your park. So I've got a shelter up here, another one down here, over here. And then I've got three in this area. This section here doesn't have a shelter, but oh well. It's just going to decrease your guest comfort or guest... Sat I'm pretty sure it's guest comfort. It's going to decrease that a little bit. Um, but as long as you've got decent shelter coverage everywhere else, you'll be right. You, 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 know, you will have no problems at all. Um, yeah, so as long as you can keep your guest comfort and satisfaction as high as it possibly can... Um, you're going to get lots of guests in your park. Try and get that appeal up so you get more guests coming. And um, yeah, I can't think of anything else to say. But if you guys still have any questions about this one, just leave a comment and um, I'll get back to you. I'll explain uh, what's going on. Um, so yeah, that's going to do it for this one. So thank you all so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed. This was a bit of a longer one. Please like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. Ciao! Thank you.